Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going back to the Insight because Flex Seal did not work. When it gets hot, I did this just the other day, when it gets hot, it doesn't melt, but it gets so pliable that you can just grab it and move it around. So this, this is not working. As soon as this thing gets hot, this stuff just starts leaking anyway. So that didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So now I'm just going to replace the radiator itself. You might be able to tell, but I've already done the first step. I took the cap off here to make it breathe better. When you go down here and you actually drain it, if you look all the way down here, you might be able to see there is a drain plug down here. Let's see if I can get a better angle on it. It's going to be right down here. I don't have it in, but right where that hole is down there. You're gonna twist that open and drain it out. Once that's done, there's just gonna be a few things that we gotta take off. We gotta take off this radiator hose, so we're gonna pinch that, pull that out. We're also gonna get this little bleeder up here, just pull that one straight out. And what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take off this hinge so I can take out the radiator, because, well, that's in the way. So I'm gonna take out the bolts attaching that one, and we also have some supports up here that we need to take those out. I'm gonna see what size those are, but a few things up front, definitely gonna take this one out too. All right, so I took off the support there. That's a 10 millimeter, and I was able to slide that back. I do have to crack the hose off of here, so usually what I end up doing is I get a big pair of pliers, and I put it around the hose that's on here and grab it and kind of go back and forth just a little bit until it cracks because it's been sealed on there for so long. Once that cracks and it can actually turn, then you can slide it off way, way easier than you could before. Once that hose is cracked off, slid back and moved out of place, I can now move over to these 10 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna grab these, pop these off, and I'm gonna get this out of the way. All right, now that I removed the three 10 millimeters that held the latch on, it's still being held in down here, but really you don't need to do that because once we get the whole radiator out, we'll be able to finagle this out of the way without actually detaching it. So next up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the 10 millimeters that hold on the fan shroud so I can take the radiator out separately. So there's one over here and one over here, and you can also get a Phillips head in there, but I don't know how the heck someone can do that, so I'm gonna use a 10 mil. All right, once those are taken off, you can kind of move the fan shroud a little bit off of the radiator so you can see those are now separate. And I've already taken off the little hose that's on here. There's no clip that's on this one. You just have to do the same thing. I just get some pliers on there, break it so it can go back and forth. Just a little wiggles. Don't try to crank it, you might tear it. But if you just kind of go back and forth until it pops off, you can definitely feel it. And then you just slide it out. And that's it, that's everything for the top portion up here. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I was able to do this from above so I didn't have to take off my, my little thing down there for air deflection. I'm hoping I don't have to because the ground's wet, it just rained. I don't wanna do that, plus it's like 40 degrees outside, it's freezing, anyway. So I just took that off, you might be able to see down there, I got a, a wrench down there and scooted that clamp forward so it's usually not that high, it's tucked in there a little bit. Move that forward, now I just have to grab the hose, crack it loose, and pop it open, just like I did with this guy right up here. All right, I just got that hose clamp off. Took a little bit of doing without going underneath the car, but if you put your mind to it, you can do it sometimes. Anyway, right next to it, you've got a little hose down there, and it has a hose clamp on it. So if you look straight down from the car, this is our top radiator hose. If we look down here, we've got two hoses that run up. So one on the left side, that's the one I just showed you, and one here on the right side that comes up. This one's gonna be the same thing. It's got a hose clamp. It's the same process. Take off that hose clamp, crack it loose, pop it open, and we'll go from there. All right, now that those two hoses are out of the way, we only have one thing left in our way, and that's the fan shroud. Now, I've got this moved over right now. You can tell, uh, maybe you can on the video, I've got it kind of out of the way. Basically, what you want to do is over here on the right-hand side, you grab the fan, you move it all the way to the left, so you have enough room for it to pop out of where it's behind right here in the middle. 
if you, let me grab it for you. See how it's on the outside of this metal now? If you scoot it all the way left, you can tuck it back in and scoot it over so it's center behind this and this side because there's metal pieces that go in here to hold it in place. If you scoot it all the way to the left and then out, you can slide it outside of it and get it out of the way. So when you pull this up, you've got all the way on the bottom, it looks just like this one for the top radiator hose. You have one on the bottom so it catches on your fan shroud. You just have to kind of get that out of the way. That's why I moved the fan shroud over this way so I can get it out of the way because the other one's right down here. And the radiator is out. Now I do have to note, I did do an extra step because I was starting to uh, do some damage on the fins with this guy in the way. If you want, this whole piece right here, this front brace that goes along here and it's also attached to this, it goes down. You can remove this basically. So there's a 10 mil here, 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 and the other one is at the end of that. So when we were down there, it's all the way down there. It's all the way at the end, right down there. So this whole thing is basically a T and I took all those out to give me enough wiggle room with this thing so I can move it around and just because I just needed a tiny bit more room you can take this thing completely out it's extremely simple you just get all those bolts the only thing holding this in place is literally the, the wire harnesses holding this thing down so you can either detach these little wire harness things from here or you can detach the actual clips if you want this whole thing removed for extra easy installation gonna take a little bit longer but whatever works for you this worked for me to get the old one out. Now I just need to be careful putting in the new one so I don't uh, smash any fins. And here's the new one. Clean and gorgeous as it should be. Sadly, I was not able to get this on Amazon like most of the stuff that I do, but I will link down below where I got this one. Less than 100 bucks gets you a brand new one. I would have liked to have uh, something not plastic, but you know, you'd think about 20 years later they have uh, some better plastic on here. So I'm gonna do the reverse. Pop it in. Hopefully you don't screw anything up. The fins, that is. So yeah, I ended up taking this whole thing off. It's still got some stuff connected on here, but I just popped those out so I could move this out of the way 100 times easier. Also, something else I forgot to mention, the little rubber feet on the bottom of your old one, make sure to put those on. Now when you're putting this back on, you definitely have to make sure you put it on in the right place. So basically what works for me is put everything on here nice and snug, still it's where you can move this up and down. And I had mine all the way down, tried to close the hood and it wouldn't latch. So then I moved it all the way up, tightened everything down, not super tight, but tighten it enough so it wouldn't move, close the hood and it latched. So that's where I kept it. Um, you're gonna have to do a little bit of trial and error to make sure this gets to just the right point to where your hood latches. But once you get that in, you get everything else, everything snapped into place, put this back on, everything. Now I get to fill it, both the reservoir and the whole thing with some 50-50, and then we get to bleed and burp the system. All right, so I grabbed my little no spill funnel thing here again. I put everything down below if you do want one of these. This thing is the absolute best way to do it, the only way to do it in my opinion, but pop this thing on, fill it up until the bubbles stop, and it is really cold outside. So my fan, there's no way that thing's gonna turn on with this tiny engine. So while it's running, I'm gonna be squeezing the top radiator hose and the bottom one down there to try to make sure all the bubbles get worked through. So it's gonna take a little while. You're gonna see it up here. Once the bubbles stop, it's been running for a long time, the car's warmed up, you've got the heater cranked over, everything you need to do, you should be good. Turn the car off, plug it, and that's it. Of course, make sure there's no leaks, but there's no leaks down there. And once those bubbles stop, you know the job is done. So thank you guys for watching. Watch out for another video where I'm gonna be fixing something else. Who knows what it is, but something's gotta be fixed.